taking a break shortly from the deluge of huge AAA releases, I thought it would be a good time to highlight a smaller indie release on the channel with Industria, a single player science fiction first person shooter from developer Bleak Mill set in 1989 East Berlin right as the Berlin Wall is falling. And to talk about this game today, uh, it's tech, performance, and much, much more. I'm joined by resident friend and colleague, John Linneman. How you doing there, John? Ooh, resident friend and colleague. <laughs> yes. Yeah, upgraded. I like that. Uh, yeah, I've also played some of this game after seeing a lot of the shots on social media. I was kind of blown away by the visual style. And there's a lot of really good things in here, but also some not so good things I think we'll get to. Yeah, this game, smaller development titles, so it has to pick its battles, and some of them are great wins, some of them are decided losses, but that's all stuff we'll talk about in this video. So let me just give a short little description of the game so people in the audience get a sense of it beyond the visuals you're seeing on screen right now. It takes place around the time of the Berlin Wall following, just as that announcement is happening on television, and it's kind of very atmospherically introduced in the game, but immediately uh, you're transported to this kind of alternate world world uh, searching for a colleague of yours and in this abandoned city there's all this automata so like robots running around and there's no humans anymore in the city and it's generally the game you're kind of looking for stylistically here if you want comparisons i would say it takes heavy inspirations uh quite obviously from half-life 2 and yep. somewhat from the shock games possibly more like bioshock in terms of uh, the way you're mm -hmm. interacting with the world the environment and the general visual and atmospheric feeling in here uh, what was your appraisal of the game john when you initially loaded it up oh uh, i mean as you say it's very half-life but it's very atmospheric the the way they build the tension in the story during that initial segment in berlin leading up through the lab is very effective and then the alternate world you wind up in it's uh it kind of reminded me a little bit of uh the emerald city in return to oz oh that's a good one if you will you know where you kind of have this like it looks like it was once a beautiful city, now in ruins. There's weird things around. Uh, there's automata, as you mentioned. Not quite the wheelmen, but, you know, <laughs> it works. But, yeah, like you say, you know, you have the close close combat weapon that you start off with, which, again, is very Half-Life slash Shock. And it's really all about exploring, taking in the world, solving minor puzzles, uh, sometimes physics-based puzzles, while dealing with threats around you. And throughout the game, uh, narrative is fed to you through uh, characters that sort of appear in the game world. Again, mm -hmm. very Half-Life. Yeah, uh, I think you mentioned uh, the Brent guy that you meet early on. He kind of makes an appearance very much like Father Grigori in Half-Life 2. It's, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's so similar that I immediately wrote it down on some note, on a yep. uh, notepad right as I was seeing it. I mean, like seriously, just look at the, this intro here. It's not a bad thing, though. <laughs> not a bad thing. I mean, Half-Life 2's um, Ravenholm section is uh, incredible. Uh, uh, for the time period, definitely. So there's a lot of Half-Life inspiration here. They even thank uh, the creators of Half-Life at the end of the game if you watch uh, all the credits through. Uh, so they're definitely wearing their inspiration on their sleeves. I'd say that's both a really good for the game. Like, I do enjoy the fact that you go through the city environment where you go from one part of the city to the next, and you can see a, con a continuity in all that. Like, in this game, uh, it, it starts off with you just in this hab block area of the city, and you make your way up onto, like, a city on the hill where there's palaces, and then you go to the canals and then the countryside. The thing is here that I think is probably less well done than Half-Life 2 or even some of those shock games is that maybe it's just time going by John you were mentioning this earlier but where your main interactivity with the world is kind of just walking through an area yeah. interacting with objects uh, you can interact with some objects in this game but they don't usually have much of a purpose uh, they're just kind of there for interactivity sakes it, it doesn't actually bring me up into the game world as much as it could have uh, I don't know another way to do interactivity in a game world but I was pulled in in the initial part but then it started to wear off actually as the game went on I think it's a bit of a pacing issue if you will you know where you ha when you have periods of walking around with very little to do where you're just taking in the narrative that can be very effective but you have to combine it with uh exciting gameplay moments and unique situations to keep you mm -hmm. engaged and i feel like this game far too often you're just kind of left exploring like that and with basically nothing to do but take in the scenery for a little too long it's yeah. really about the length if they had just shortened some of that i mean the game would be shorter i guess of course but <laughs> uh I, I found that that 
you know, I don't have as much of a tolerance for that anymore, mm -hmm. unfortunately. But still, when it does work, it does work very effectively, I would say. Yeah, it is. It The, the high notes are definitely very high in this game. I Absolutely. did enjoy a lot of uh, what I played. I beat the full game, of course. It's not so long. It took me about four hours and some to beat it. Which is nice. But what about the technology, Alex? Because I think this is the reason you wanted to look at this is much like myself. We saw the screenshots on Twitter, uh, saw the ray tracing features included, and we're like, okay, this actually looks looks really cool. Yeah, let's do this. Um, so I was excited. Unreal Engine 4 here uh, makes indie development possible to achieve this visual quality at all. The usage of ray tracing here, that's another thing where you just kind of like take a box in Unreal Engine 4 for the most part, and you have all these ray tracing features at your disposal. And I would say that the game does actually end up using Unreal Engine feature set really, really well. I especially mm -hmm. like the first time you're introduced to like one of the automata in the game, and they're like in this dark area with like fog, and the only thing lighting up the fog are their little like um, alarm lights on the automata itself, and it's just like really creepily well done you know that combines things like the fog tech and unreal engine 4 uh with the per pixel lighting and all these things other side of that coin you have them using unreal engine 4 uh features and i'd say sometimes to their own detriment mm -hmm. <laughs> um where you have the game is uh presented with a lot of baked lighting uh, both for indirect lighting and for direct lighting and so sometimes you can have most of the shadows and environmental geometry in the scene just having the lighting being done through baking and that can lead to some strange moments like here if you look at this um this tree here its shadow is done uh through like a baked shadow and it just kind of looked off you can have another uh scene like this one here where uh, the dynamic objects are shaded uh, differently than the rest of the environment. Like the door here, which is kind of just like standing out and looking like really, really odd. Uh, so that doesn't happen throughout the entire game, of course. Like I would say like the first two thirds of the game are visually incredibly polished and these things don't stand out uh, as much. Uh, these like slight uh, visual errors in the game. Uh, but in the last one third of the game, like right when you get down to the canals area, up until right before the very end, the game takes like, for some reason, the, the visual polish goes down quite a bit. I think it's interesting because to me that, that seems more like a time and budget issue mm -hmm. where it's clear that they poured a lot of love into creating this world. And I suspect that during that last one third of the game, uh, they just didn't have the resources to provide the same level of detail you saw during the first two thirds. Yeah, that's what it looked and felt like for sure. Um, and I think that also carries over to the way ray tracing is handled in this game. So you have shadows, ambient occlusion, reflections on opaque surfaces, and the reflections are set up so that they even very rough materials get reflections here, which is very mm -hmm. nice, but it makes and it heavy, <laughs> heavy, of course. So like, like here, I'll turn it on and off in this scene. And the one thing I want you to look at is like the gun, how the shading, like it's very, made of a very dull metal, the gun here, but even that the shading on that changes rather dramatically here. So that shows you that the reflections are doing even like very rough objects, which is really cool. And when you're playing the game, I played it initially with ray tracing on. There's areas that definitely look like they seem like they were designed around ray tracing. Like here in this liminal space in the game, this happens multiple times in the game. We'll play the game to figure out what it is. It's very interesting. But like, look at these chairs. With ray tracing off, it kind kind of looks unfinished <laughs> with ray tracing on it, it it looks it looks much much better the thing is though is in these specific spaces i did find i, I mentioned this to you earlier but mm -hmm. even with ray tracing enabled there's certain objects and scene geometry that almost have like a thick black outline around them that looks kind of strange so there, there's definitely some visual inconsistencies here uh even when using ray tracing it's a tricky thing though because again this is a very small production right and it's trying to emulate the look i don't want to say emulate but it's you know it's trying to deliver an experience that looks like a big trip away game mm -hmm. and i think they get rather close often. I think it's actually interesting to look at these areas where perhaps it doesn't quite hit the mark, you know, because it kind of gives you the impression of what they were struggling with or, or how the, the process went for them. Yeah, that's exactly what I say. So like, it almost feels like that for some part of the development, they designed areas with ray tracing on and others with it off. Yeah. Almost like, uh, so like here, this area, like 
there's no shadow here without even ray tracing on. So it's like, oh, they probably designed that with the ray tracing on. Or when you get into the city itself, ray traced reflections, huge <laughs> heavy lifting yeah, uh, to make sure so, so the game looks really good in a lot of views. But other areas, I don't think they designed this with uh, ray tracing on or specifically ray tracing shadows being on. Like in the city itself, uh, there's a lot of areas where it doesn't seem like the, ray, like the ray trace shadows are working correctly. Or like when you get out into the countryside later in the game, the ray tracing shadows don't seem to be applying to and from foliage in this in the scene as well so you get yeah. just like weird glowing foliage without shadows usually now here i would say okay you definitely want to play the game with rt on it definitely helps the visuals but only use rtao and rt reflections because uh, i don't think the rt shadows were designed uh very well to be integrated with this game but i would say that usually but there's a catch here and that's I don't actually think many people should or would be playing this game with RT on because of the performance implications. Yeah, this is shocking. So this game is perhaps one of the heaviest I've seen in terms of CPU utilization specifically. <laughs> yeah. It kind of doesn't matter what your graphics card is. So I am using an RTX 3090, right? But the card basically takes a nap because my I'm using an older i9-7960X. Still a huge uh, CPU, by the way. 16 cores on there, but you know, they're clocked a little lower, it's a little older. It just can't do it. Like when, when you first walk out into the city with ray tracing, I was getting between like 25 and 40 <laughs> FPS. Yep. Uh, and then, but you turn off ray tracing and it's still like 40-ish. Mm -hmm. um, and the resolution does not matter. It doesn't matter what your settings are. It's all down to the CPU. It just couldn't deal with it. I think it might be the heaviest PC game <laughs> I've ever played on my rig. I mean, you could still argue stuff like, you know, Flight Simulator, but I think that's a little easier to get running optimally versus this where everything we tried, just, it wasn't enough. And I mean, it was helped by the fact that VRR, I was using G-Sync, and that does help smooth things out somewhat, but also uh, the motion blur stops working. <laughs> yes, for some reason. Which is uh, an annoying glitch after the first like area, like the motion blur stops working and never comes back. And when you combine that with the inconsistent performance, it just doesn't make a great impression when you're out in the city. No, it definitely doesn't. Like, So just check this out here. Ryzen 3600, RT is off in this view on the left hand side and RT is on on the right hand side this the, the, the resolution has been purposely set very low the settings are set to high and here you can see it's CPU limited it's like in the low 50s upper 40s here without RT on while looking at this view in the city and 29 to 30 FPS with RT on on a Core i9 1000K it would be around 50 40 FPS while being CPU limited with RT on and actually it could manage 60 FPS there with RT off but that CPU is stupidly fast and massive uh, that's definitely not what anyone has. Most people will have something like a Ryzen 3600. Uh, so this game, when you get to the city, you're going to be seeing CPU limited dips uh, that will be getting in the way of your graphics card performance. Uh, still though, I did do uh, some GPU testing just to see what's going on there because there are moments definitely when the GPU is not being CPU limited in the city itself. Here I did uh, some benching on high settings, 1440p uh, with the normal mid-range cards that I've been doing recently. I saw here that the RTX 2060 Super is on generally 16% faster than the RX 5700, which is a lot uh, higher than we're used to seeing uh, the difference between these two GPUs. And one of the things I also noticed was that um, DLSS quality mode in this game, at least at 1440p, looks pretty much like native, uh, even in a still of the game in movement. And that ran 36% better on average than the RX 5700. So if you are playing this game on an AMD uh, GPU of this caliber, definitely go to 1080p on NVIDIA. I would say use DLSS mm -hmm. at 1440p quality or balance mode. But you know, it's hard to say what's going to happen because I think for most people out there, you're going to be CPU limited and might be struggling uh, to get your performance up when you get to the city in the game. And that's the thing is because, I mean, you tested these graphics cards on your 10900K, right? Uh, these ones here are the 10900K ones, yes. That's, that's the thing. That's a very good CPU. I would imagine people using these mid-range cards probably don't have such a CPU. You combine that with the heavy CPU requirements and... I just foresee a lot of people struggling to get a decent frame rate out in the city. Yeah, that's what I'd imagine as well, too. And I think, you know, with that being said, we can come to the conclusion here uh, of, about this smaller title, Industria. I would say when I was playing it, I was playing it on, once again, though, I played it on like a really strong rig uh, where I was not CP limited because I turned off ray tracing uh, as soon as I got to the city and I realized I was definitely not going to be getting 60 there. <laughs> then I 
played through the entire game, I'd say the game gets really good two-thirds the way in. You, you get a lot of the arsenal in the game. The later arsenal, like the shotgun and the uh, the rifle, have like a really good weapon feel, and it, and it feels really good to shoot them. That's when the game is really firing on all cylinders and feels really great. But the game kind of patters out towards the end, visually especially, but narratively as well too. I felt less engaged. And I think if I was going to offer critique here for the technical side of things I would hope that developers in patches uh, for this game work to make it less brutally CPU limited when you're in the city with or without ray tracing it doesn't really matter as well as some slight polish after the first level the motion blur just disables and never turns on again no matter what you do and also like I don't know what's possible on the the back half of the game but look you know looking at that it's it almost feels like they need to rebake some of the lighting or just handle the lighting differently because there's so much that. like light leaking and just strangely bright areas contrasted against complete dark yeah that, that that's what I'd say as well but as a kind of general thing about games like this industrial I want to see more games like this I want to see games with smaller completion times likewise I want to see games focusing on a strong narrative and branching out into weird directions I really like the weirdness in this game and I do want to see games that are shooters that don't only go to the boomer shooter route yep. it may not always be successful here but I really enjoy that someone's trying to branch out into FPS combat that isn't just double barreled shotguns running really fast I agree and it's nice to see it and you're right we don't get this type of shooter anymore it is either boomer shooters which i do love have an affinity for <laughs> i love uh or like the more <laughs> scripted style you know where it's yeah. very cinematic and those those are around this sort of middle ground that's still very old school but also trying to tell a story like we don't see too many of these anymore mm -hmm. I, I i agree i think it's actually still very effective and appealing to play this game uh, and i do think it's an experience worth having but there's just some caveats and things that make it feel like they just didn't quite make it all the way. I want to see what these guys do next because it's very, very promising. And you can tell that a lot of love was poured into it. Yeah, I definitely see that as well too. And we'll see what Bleak Mill's up to next. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video covering a smaller game on the channel. And if you did like it, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, hit that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to help us out, support Digital Foundry on Patreon to get years worth of our content available in high quality for download if you want to talk to john or myself about industry write a comment below or follow us on twitter and as always this is alex bringing you farewell and um goodbye <laughs>